Hello and welcome. I'm TJ Walker. Thanks for joining us today. We are live. This is a session for you to ask any question about communication skills. We're all about helping you become more successful in life by boosting your communication skills and boosting your confidence in your communication skills. And believe it or not, those two are not the same thing. Sometimes there is a disconnect. We already have a crowd here. Susan's with us. Ben has stopped by. Barb and so many experts who have varying niches of expertise on communication. Susan is a podcaster and has her own website posting regular video content related to health and wellness and faith. Barb is a, a world renowned expert on building communities on Facebook and other places and is, is followed the speaking industry and personal development industry since the Zig Ziglar days going way back. So it's glad, I'm very glad to have all of you. Thanks so much for stopping by. Right before we went live, we were all trying to figure out a way of being even more effective with using the latest technology. There's 4K, there's high definition, there's using artificial intelligence to take long form videos and convert it into short form content. Barb, if you don't mind, you were just talking a moment ago about new features that StreamYard uses, and we are using StreamYard now, that allows content creators like us to convert our content into short form content, different pieces, and to do it quicker and faster than using human editors. Not that we want to cut human editors out of the whole process, but do you mind sharing that with our folks joining us live? Well, there's really not too much. I will just say that it's right on StreamYard's website on how to do it. Um, but the, uh, StreamYard has been, to me, the, the number one leader in tools to facilitate live streaming because one, the, the first and foremost reason is that they listen to their customers and they started initially with podcasters because the voice is the most important thing, the audio. So one of the th services that they offer is to split the audio and video in any live cast, but they went the extra yard in making sure from their end and capturing audio sounds that they had the highest quality. And so that's another, all of our information resides on the cloud on their servers so we can download in, in the past, we could download the whole presentation at one time. Well, fast forward to them uh, this year, they also enabled uh, AI to help create clips from our videos, to read our videos and say, oh, this would make a good short and this would be good on, on uh, Instagram or this would be good as a YouTube short or on Facebook and so forth. And so that's built into the tool and available to you behind the scenes, you know, when you in your account, and so now um, as Benjamin is is learning to assist TJ uh, on his uh, Streamyard broadcast, it's one of the most powerful things because TJ is also recording in high def in the 4K version locally, and he's learned how to do that. But so it's always have a backup. There's mm -hmm. nothing more important to learn when you get uh, use any technology resources have a backup if it's not your phone this is another thing about StreamYard uh, last week I was in a live and I was in a live just like we are today I'm using my laptop to communicate with you all but my computer crashed the live has to go on correct you're mm -hmm. thinking well Barb this is your live how is it going to go on? She's not here. All these people on. were on the screen together, right? Because we are using this tool. I All I had to do was bring it up through my web browser on my phone, not even an app. You, can, you know, there is, there is an app available now, but it's just so simple. And I just went to Google, and the minute I put StreamYard in, it dropped me into, in, in the Google search, it actually dropped me in to the studio from my phone. Mm -hmm. And there from the phone settings, I could easily add myself to the screen, 
a stream and let everybody know, hey, my computer's crashed, but I'm here for you. And I did have the tools to facilitate the stream from my phone. Yeah. So that's another. And, and today, may, it may seem a little wonky and, and tech for a show and a community about communication, but communication is always about the the tools and the technology right. as well. Otherwise, all you can ever do is talk to one person at a time and you don't reach many people that way. So the technology is critically important. And I do believe that someone who wants to communicate and have an impact on the world has to not necessarily have a PhD in computer science, but needs to use the tools and know the tools of their time. Uh, you, it's not enough to say, well, I like standing up on the stump. I'm gonna give stump speeches. Good luck getting people to come to your stump speech. We have to know the tools of, the, of our time. And I'm not always the best staying up to date and current. And that's why I do try to find a good team of experts to work with, Barb being one, Ben being uh, one. And Susan, of course, knows as you're on your own journey with the podcast, it's not enough to just have an interesting conversation. There's the editing and encoding and and are you going to use, you know, which RSS feed are you going to use to distribute it to Spotify and iTunes and all that. So we simply do not have the luxury of saying, I'm not a tech person. We have to learn the technology if we want our voice and our message to have maximum impact. Barb, question for you, a, a technology thing that Ben and I have been struggling with is we can't figure out how to use StreamYard to stream onto TikTok. And certain platforms like to be very protective of their audience and they put up extra hurdles to make it harder to sort of share their stream. <clears throat> and some even have in their rules, you can only stream live on us, but mm -hmm. don't necessarily enforce it. The fast and, and what I was doing earlier this week and last week is I would just put my cell phone on a tripod right next to this camera and I had two streams going on. But the problem with that is then I can't really read the comments easily standing three feet away from my cell phone with the folks joining from TikTok and they can't come on screen or if I put them on screen, then the people on all the other channels and all the other platforms can't see it. So it became chaotic. But the frustrating thing for me is we would have sometimes 500 or more people joining us live on TikTok and they were asking more questions and more of them wanted to come on live. So it's kind of frustrating losing that audience. So if you, and we did reach out to the folks at StreamYard and we just haven't figured out a solution. So what did, know, what Barb, did StreamYard seen, say? Ben, what did, what did StreamYard say when we asked them about how to connect with TikTok? They, they said uh, we need an uh, a RTM to be yeah. able to link. RTMP. Yes, to, yes so, RTMP. All right. Ben, that's that gets then, a little but we more. do but we do that all the time ben don't yeah. we yeah yes. i thought you had so, i honestly thought you had it set up so um, so and at the moment uh tj doesn't have rtmp on his tiktok account so, oh so oh. tiktok has to give it to us it's not that, something yeah that's not create. a stream yard thing that's that's on tiktok and i would just gotcha. say add to that is very first thing, whenever you're having trouble with technology that you've chosen to use, in particular, another reason why Barb says StreamYard, 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 do StreamYard, is because the very top podcasters in the world started with StreamYard. I mean, they, they gravitated towards it right away when we could do both audio and video, but the number one reason that they chose it was the quality of audio. The number two reason is, that company, the founders of that company, and I knew the, the young men that founded it when they were college students in the University of Oregon. And the whole thing, they put the customer first. So if you ever have an issue with their particular product, um, you can very quickly put in Google whatever that is and put the keyword StreamYard with it, and you will find the top, top, uh, live casters online today 
And I mean, you know, I sent you to Sean Cannell. I says he wanted you multiple resources. Sean Cannell, Daryl Eves. If you're an, a person that's over 55, you'll really resonate with what Daryl Eve ha has to say. There's four or five of them out there that are really excellent. But guess what? StreamYard also has relationships with them and features them as experts to train you on their product on their YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. very calmly, just, just stay calm and, you know, Google it first. I do that even before I go to StreamYard support because I thought, well, they know Barb. She's She's been around since the very beginning. She knows all the beta. She knows this and that. And so if Barb asks a question, how could Barb ask that question, right? So I Google it too. and and But it isn't, TikTok is very picky, but a lot of the, and I would say probably over 85% of the errors are user errors. They're from our end and not understanding how it works. Mm -hmm. So if it's just the art, let's, if... let's think this through here a minute, because you know, one of the premises of this live show we do every day is sort of taking people behind the scenes, behind the curtains to show the sort of the messy process of making content and the thought process. Because sometimes when all you do is see the finished slick 30 second video or eight minute video, it can be intimidating. So we do want to show people some of this nuts and bolts stuff that we grapple with trying to to figure it out it occurred to me ben if we actually googled how do i get my rtm from TikTok? if we googled that rtmp see, rtm RTMP. how do we get an rtmp from TikTok? i know at one point we heard some indications you needed twenty five thousand followers and we have mm -hmm. about twelve thousand now so it may be that we can't get around that and it's just a function of time. But Ben, have we done that exact search? Because maybe there's some other workaround of getting an RTMP. Yes, I have. I've searched actually, but the information I got was exactly what you said. What this re responded was um, they gave to to TikToker that has up to 25,000 followers. So that's, that's the basic information I got when I started. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thanks for checking into that. We'll continue to look at that. We've had some Facebook users adding comments. This is an amazing idea to shorten the long videos. We can use it also in TikTok account. I think mm -hmm. uh, the commenter was referring to what we were discussing with StreamYard, taking a long show, a long session, and giving you automatically the shorts. Also says, I really want to thank TJ for the course. It's very useful to me to set goals and achieve it. And after I'd made my first course online. Great. Well, let us know what course you were in and what course you're making. We'd love to promote your course and perhaps show your promo video. And the same user, I, and I don't see the name, unfortunately, because you haven't registered yet with StreamYard, says, you are my role model in making courses online. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad for that. And I would, I would just add, try to come up with 10 role models. Look at Phil Ebbinger, look at a lot of the top creators on Udemy and other platforms and borrow and mix and match and do the best practices you see all of them doing, tailor it to your own needs. And that I think will, will help you a lot more than just following one person, although I'm very flattered that you are mentioning me as one of your role models. So thanks. So let's do a little, exp this is a little different from what we normally do here but let's just try an experiment. So yesterday, Barb, during our live session, we had just tons and tons and tons of great questions that people were asking. And it led to me giving some answers that I think were you know, in the two minute vein. And I was not recording those on 4K because my mindset was, I'm gonna make a whole bunch of eight minute long form YouTube videos or, or long form videos for social media. After I finished the show, I thought, you know what? There's probably a lot of good nuggets there. So I mentioned to Ben, why don't we try to experiment with the StreamYard function? Because it was a three-hour show. Let's see what it can turn into interesting short-form video. Because if it spits out 20 and we look at them and seven are pretty good, let's use those seven. 
And Ben, I know you've been doing a million different things. Have you had a chance to, to do that yet? And do we know how long it's going to do? Maybe we can just do it within the, the, our time together right now. Is that something you had yes. a chance to do yet, Ben? Yes, I've checked it out. I tried uh, getting shot from your long content on uh, StreamYard. But uh, the specifically for the one for the show yesterday, though? Yes, for the one from yesterday's show. So and then what did it what I got? Up? Yes, I think what I still need to do, I need to edit it out myself. So you just need to pick the point you want the show to come out from. It's not something that is generated automatically. So uh, you have to still pick okay. the point you want the show to be, and then you'll be able to publish and then download it. So that's what I got. Uh, okay, so I that's not it. really going to save as much time then. Yeah. Actually, you just have to learn how to do it. You have to learn how to use it because pauses mean everything. And when you're dealing, this also has to do with your education in artificial intelligence and how it works. And with that, um, and everyone will have a different experience because we all learn different ways. But um, the actual application, the StreamYard application and its use of AI, it's going to respond to how you are using their um, the service and the uh, TJ is a, a master at what he does and he actually if you watch him very much and you know I've watched him thousands of hours <laughs> and he has strategic pauses and he he just automatically does it so it picks up on that and you can create different segments easily that way in his questions but it, you train the AI. If the first time doesn't work, you use it again. And you will see from behind the scenes as you're using it that you it will have uh, more responsive answers for you. So it's just a matter of, of using it regularly and getting it to work for you. And I think it's going to be that way no matter what. Just, just like you. I mean, I, Benjamin, came from the traditional editing background, video editing background, and we had to have multiple tools to get what we wanted, and it took a lot more time. And so, I mean, for, for now, if that's the Band-Aid that works best for you, yes, but I urge you to, you to learn how to use the tool. And TJ does do setups like that, where it, he is a, a master of speaking, and the, the strategic pauses that he takes are very important. Like for instance, when he asks, he says, I have a student that asked me this question. He pauses briefly and he asks the question. And so all of those are breaks that the AI will pick up. And it's very important, uh, TJ, as a speaker, um, if it was Jane Doe, say, you know, whoever that name is of that person is to pause after that so it picks up the name. And, uh, but strategic pauses are very, very important in using AI for recording. And could I, TJ, since I have the mic at the moment, Susan Cadell has asked a very important question and it's in the same vein. She says, I have a question. How do you feel about script writing before recording and using a teleprompter? Mm -hmm. And this is the whole thing there in Susan, uh, uh, artificial intellig intelligence can be a very helpful tool for you in actually creating that script and before recording and learning how to use a teleprompter. TJ has offered um, different teleprompting options. He's not real big on the traditional teleprompter. I mean, it really takes an art and expertise where we came from in life when the word teleprompter was set before us. But today's teleprompter, the Big View TV, if you follow that uh, YouTube channel and that teleprompter product, it's available for you. It's software on your phone as well as on the web, mm -hmm. just like, yeah, you don't, but you don't, yes, 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 yes. That's the old way. And yes, that still well, works. no, this isn't really the old way. So I well, put my iPad right here. Yeah. So I mean, the really, the really, and I used to have one of the ones that is no different than what they had in the fifties, where you had a, a hand scroll and you had like a conveyor belt and you put actual paper script down, and then it was computer. This is really just a piece of glass and it mounts, and you put your your camera 
behind it and cover it up. You put your iPad here and then you're able to look right through the lens. If you're using, I mean, here's my problem. I don't have a problem with new technology. The problem with using it on your phone is it's, it, you're no longer doing the through the lens. This has the lens right through it. So you, your eyes look so much better placed. And I can make the font really large and I can, I can now stand eight feet away from the camera. Now you might not want to be eight feet away from the camera. How much but, does that product cost? I mean, this is only a few hundred bucks. What's a few hundred? 300, something 500? Like yeah. Uh, no, I think it was like $200 or something like that. It's, it's pretty inexpensive. I, in fact, I think I have, I think I have an Amazon influencer review on, on, my, okay. on my Amazon storefront. We'll look, it's glide gear teleprompter. You know, one of us will, can look it up during the break and see how much it costs. It's inexpensive. If you already have an iPad, then it, it doesn't really cost anything. And then what I do think is the most important piece of this puzzle is using software that the script follows you rather than you following the script. And I think it's called Smart Prompt is the software, right? Because I do occasionally use a teleprompter if I'm making a, a highly specialized webinar or something where the content has to be just right. So Susan, let me ask you, let me answer your question a little more broadly. And the answer is it depends. There are some content creators who are perhaps like you doing one or two videos a week and you want to really be thoughtful. It's a, it's a, there's craftsmanship involved. You want to get the words just right. And some of the most wildly successful content creators do in fact script everything like a movie. Matt, Matt Davala, I think is, what of his name? Uh, uh, Frank, what's the gentleman Frank who has the same name of a, of a famous Cornell professor? Barb, you know what I'm talking about Frank. He's a personal development expert. It'll come to me in just a moment. He scripts everything. So it can work really well for some creators. And then you load it up on the teleprompter. And certainly after you've been doing it for a few months, you can get good at it. The problem most people have is they start to read a teleprompter and they look and sound like it. And it's awful. And it destroy and they don't have enough time to get good at it. And they've made eight videos over two months and they're so awful. Their, their audience plummets and then they give up. So I don't want that to happen to anyone. You need to ask yourself the question for any technology, why am I using this technology? What is it going to help? There are certain types of content where you want to get every word just right. And you've really polished the script and it makes a huge difference. A teleprompter can help a great deal. There's no doubt about it. There are a lot of other content creators where they're much better off using a simple outline. Someone like an Ali Abdal does not use a, a teleprompter for the whole thing. And he may do eight minute, 12 minute, sometimes a 30 minute video. And he's glancing down occasionally at an outline. And that's perfectly fine. For me, I would have to destroy 95% of my content if I were to use a teleprompter because it would just simply take too long the processing and the creating and, and doing all that. So. You got to ask yourself, what is, what is your real goal? Now you're a consultant, Susan. So your part of your job is talking to people, giving advice, helping them. And so to me, that sort of lends itself more to treating the camera like you're talking to one prospective client and just talking to them. For most people, it's going to be so much more conversational, more interesting more like a real experience than writing it all out because it is very hard to write a script that really sounds good to the ear because when we write, we, it's a visual thing. We see it and it tends to make things sound a little more artificial. So Barb just posted, here's the link to big view, not hundreds of dollars in hardware web-based. 
And so that's Barb, if you're using your cell phone or at least your, your webcam. It's just like StreamYard. So you can use your phone, you can use your smart device, you can use your camcorder. It gives you multiple options and podcasters are gravitate. I mean, you can, in, not all okay, of us Barb, are millionaires. Just to clarify, are you talking about as a teleprompter? Or are you talking yes, about- Yes, a... it's not only that, if you click, um, when you click on it, you can set the pace of reading. That's how you really learn about teleprompting because um, you can set the pace of your lettering coming across the, the no. screen for your no. reading, horrible, your size. Horrible idea, Barb, horrible idea. Well, <laughs> I, I thought that, um, I don't live in the 80s. I live for now, today, yeah. and I have embraced no, technology but that's what I'm talking about. since the, the 80s. No, Barb, I'm talking about the latest cutting edge technology. So is, am I. You cannot set a speed because that is not how human beings no, talk. No, I'm saying you set the teleprompter speed. to your speed. It's again using artificial intelligence. Oh, you're saying, yes. let me make sure I'm understanding. You're saying if you stop and pause, it will stop. Right. Okay, it, well, that's it, the It's I'm all saying, already yeah. has, it has artificial. Again, yeah. like I chose StreamYard, they stayed up with technology. They listened to the customers. They said, this is the tool they need today. And they also yeah. recognize that we are international. And mm -hmm. even not everybody has tons of money to work with. Yeah. We want to so start the, where it's... So we're on the same page, Barb. Here's the one I use. It's called Prompt Smart, yeah. and it's $3 a month. So if you had a big project, you could use it for one month. And again, what it does is it follows you. I, when you said set the speed, I thought you meant like 140 words per minute. So that was my fault for making that assumption. What you want is for the teleprompter to follow you, right. not for you to follow the text. So here's my only quibble with any of the web-based things is if I'm looking down here, now my eyes are no longer looking at the camera. and that can make a huge difference. So that's the beauty of a through the lens teleprompter is people feel like it's a real connection. If I'm looking down here, I might sound conversational, and, but you can sort of see, it doesn't really look like I'm looking at you anymore. So that's, that's the bigger issue. Any thoughts on that, Barb? I believe in using the latest technologies for that are the most cost effective for me to help to help me get my work done. And I also believe just as we're watching the internet and what's going and communication, communication is a two way street. And if um, one of your uh, YouTube viewers, but I don't want to talk at people, but more like a conversation. Mm -hmm. And so you, we can do that in conversing, but if there is, um, and, and that is probably the biggest thing that happens is that people get out, they use the tool, but they're talking at others and they're not talking with others. Mm -hmm. And it's really critical that you learn, um, for, for a good example of the type of teleprompter I use is I work uh, uh, with a lot of folks who have English as a second language. Now, the kind of people I work with, they're not just your general students, they are scientists and company CEOs and kings of countries and so forth that are balloonists, you know that, that mm -hmm. they're into ballooning and ballooning is not an inexpensive sport. So it is, and they're also mainly introverts. So, uh, and, and yet they have the responsibility they do. Well, with the type of teleprompter that's web-based, you can actually bring that up on screen. They can be talking to you and the information scrolling so they can see this in English and other, you know, we're gonna work on this together kind of thing. And you mm -hmm. can control that. You can control by your voice and with the right tools. And so this is where AI has done a positive thing Mm -hmm. And being able, because it's, you know, we can command whether it's, you know, following our voice, picking up on our inflections, all that kind of thing. 
And so that's why I chose the product I did. I'm not yeah. saying, I mean, there are multiple products out there. There's, there's competition to StreamYard. I've, I, I've looked into all of them. And I, you know, I am set on this particular platform because I've watched the story from the beginning to now. And they not only embrace um, the knowledge of their customers, they actually highlight their customers all the time and give them shows on their channels and so forth. So everybody mm -hmm. wins together. And so that's all. Well, good points, Barb. And you convinced me on StreamYard. I use them because of you. And if you could perhaps do a favor for uh, anyone watching this, maybe they're watching on demand, uh, unless it's breaking some rule, post your affiliate link to StreamYard because we may have some people who want to check it out and you might as well get an affiliate commission. So if you don't mind posting that, uh, that would be great. Just go to barbt.com, barbt.com slash the yard. And that is a short link to uh, my account, uh, PayPal, or I'm sorry, my affiliate account. Okay, and great. if I could just on the sound bite on that. When any of us are streaming online and we're doing that a business, we have all kinds of issues to be concerned about when we share out our dot coms or whatever. And so because we not not only from uh, our own standpoint, it's the agreements that we make, like with folks like Amazon, the folks at Google to use their services. And so it's important to have what they call a link and bio product. Like for instance, if you go to barbtusa.com, which is what you see here on my uh, uh, profile, mm -hmm. that is a link and bio. And when that, when that resolves, it goes to a Linktree account and shows all these different places to reach me. And you can put your affiliate links on there and you know, provide that information to whatever resource you've been, you are linking to uh, um, wh whoever you're representing and in particular Amazon, because they've paid a tremendous amount of money to make sure that all of the affiliate links are right on. Mm -hmm. And StreamYard, just one more soundbite on that. Once any of us get a StreamYard account, say for instance, you did, you went to barbt.com slash the yard and so that's just all in lowercase make it very easy on yourself um, when you do that and you sign up then you automatically have the option you get an affiliate account right from the get-go and i had no idea i learned something today too as so always talking with you when you do that and this is why this particular company is a win-win because they track from from their end and not only that i get a portion of that because Great. i sent you to ba that. barb apologies one second i gotta say goodbye to ben he's got to do a few things to set up for our amazon live so ben we'll plan on doing that around eleven thirty-five. so in was that roughly well that's oh that's in 12 minutes or so so let me let oh, you wow. go Ben. i know you've got some things to do so, Barb, I, I want to make sure we're not uh, not confusing anyone and uh, or me confusing myself. I'm not. A, I, I'm always in favor of using the absolute best new technology to help me achieve the goal. The goal shouldn't be to just use new technology to use new technology because right. you've certainly seen and I've certainly seen people who were perfectly good public speakers. The new technology of PowerPoint came out. And all of a sudden they say, oh, here's new technology. Let me use it. And they never looked anyone in the eye again. And they sat there and read bullet points off a screen and bored right. everyone to death because, hey, it's technology. So it's always got to be looked at through the lens of what's our goal. So I, I think I was maybe confusing with the look of this. All the technology you're talking about can be used on a web, on an iPad, and you put it here, it's bounced on this mirror that's, yeah. I guess, a, a one-way mirror where I can see it, but the camera on the other side can just go right through it because it's pure glass. Mm -hmm. The difference is it allows me to read the words 
and look right into the camera. Mm -hmm. My concern, and I've seen this, whether people are using cue cards or a script or a teleprompter, is if they're not, if they don't appear to be looking at the camera, if they're looking over here or down here, it's very noticeable to the people watching. And it seems, it, it draws attention to the fact that, hey, this person's using a teleprompter or a script, and it makes it artificial. So I'm all in favor of any new web-based programs you have, but my biggest concern, or I won't say biggest, one of the big concerns is trying to get the eyes so that they appear to be looking at the camera most of the time. You wanna glance down occasionally, that can look natural, but if it's very consistent down here on my on my computer screen or to the side of it, that I find really distracts people. That's my, really my only point there. And we've got uh, oh, Susan's, and we appreciate you being with us, Susan. Susan had asked a few questions. So you're mentioning, Susan, that you feel like you may ramble from time to time. Well, Susan's tied up on a call. <laughs> we'll address that when she she comes back, if she's able to. And Susan was also nice enough to to share her her link tree, I guess, linkup.top is the, I guess, a different brand similar to Linktree. Now, Susan brought up the whole topic of teleprompters because she says she's afraid she rambles from time to time. And it can give you very specific discipline if you write it, edit it, refine it. And as Barb mentioned, you can take a script you worked on, upload it to ChatGPT or some other AI program and say, please rewrite this to make this a great sounding script for social media video. And it can even make it better. So that can eliminate the rambling issue. If you do think that's a real problem, do that. What I have found is if you take the time to have a simple bullet pointed outline for your videos and maybe you practice it once <clears throat> and then do it and record it, it may be actually a lot better than a version you do with a teleprompter. And even with one practice, it may take a lot less time than writing and rewriting a script. Here's my big biggest problem with scripts for most content creators is it takes a lot more time and that makes it easy to quit creating content. That's the biggest problem. Now, you certainly you could use artificial intelligence and just come up with a few concepts, a few prompts, and it give you a script. <clears throat> and if you like the script and you feel like it's authentic to your voice, it might work well. So it doesn't necessarily have to take more time to use a script. But I, I find for most people it, it does, and that's an extra hurdle. And I want to eliminate hurdles so that you share your insights and your wisdom with as many people as possible. That's, that's really the big issue. Susan, have you, I want to be responsive if, to your comments. And Susan, if you want to come on screen, we're happy to chat with you as well. But if you don't want okay. to, that, okay. So if you don't mind, post some of your, or just talk to us about some of the things you posted because I didn't want to feel like I was ignoring you. No, it's fine. Um, um, I'm just not used to using chat and being on because when you're in kind of a, a place where you're talking or listening in a coaching session, session, you don't get to talk very much. <laughs> so I'm used to using chat. Um, um, AI is a great tool for some things, but not for others. Now for what I, my niche is biblical health using natural medicine. And we know that many of the AIs are, um, they are funded by pharma. So they oftentimes will erase a lot of my content and say, make sure that you check with your doctor. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so I'm just like, well, yeah, the disclaimers in my video at the bottom, but I don't want to keep saying that because it keeps redirecting people to go in and getting medication. And I'm, I'm kind of on the opposite side of that on the natural side. So I struggle with using AI because of that. I'm very careful. I do use it for some things like um, verbiage or structure or framework, 
but I won't use it to actually form my words or to give me what to say that I feel as a coach, this is, this is my perspective. And I understand technology is really important for us to learn and to integrate because we have to keep up with the times. However, if we lean on AI too much, we have a tendency to forget how to think for ourselves. And part of my coaching is learning to think for yourself. So, um, I kind of have, I'm a little bit on the fence with that. It's just where I'm at. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? So I, I do think that? that you need to think for yourself. We all do there, but I do think AI can be a helpful tool in helping us clarify our thoughts and be more efficient and, and I save think. time for some tasks that are just very time consuming and is just not the best way. For example, for my newsletter each week, uh, what we've been doing, and Ben has been working with me on this, is we'll, we will download the, the scripts or the transcripts, because I don't script my long form videos. We'll take like the last seven videos and we'll take the We'll just download the whole script. So if it's seven minutes and it's roughly 140 words a minute, so it's basically a thousand words. But what I'll ask the AI to do is to, hey, please summarize this thousand word script into a two sentence summary that would yeah. entice someone to want to watch the video. And it has that. And then the other thing for my own search engine optimization for my newsletter, I want to put it on my website and best practices to this day, I believe, unless it's changed, is to try to have roughly a thousand words for a blog post. So if I'm posting my whole newsletter and I've got maybe 200 words summarizing four, five, six videos, I may then say for one of the videos, okay, summarize the contents of this video that's you know, let's say it's 1200 words into 600 words. So it's pulling from my ideas. It's not me taking the AI's ideas. It's, mm -hmm. it's summarizing, synthesizing, eliminating some things. And now we can create a, a fairly complex newsletter in really a few minutes, whether, whereas to just write a thousand word newsletter from scratch, can be quite time consuming. So that to me is an example of how to use AI effectively to save time where I'm not putting out some crazy new ideas. It's all distilling it from my ideas because I'm putting my ideas into it first. And it may be that you can train an AI. Barb knows more about this than I do. It may be that you can take, download all the scripts of your past videos feed that into an AI and then say, I want to do a new post, do stuff similar to all this old stuff, but here's the new topic. Barb, am I understanding the gist of how AI can work or have I? It is trained work? on its garbage in, garbage out. It is a, you know, it's a robotic tool. It is computer based. And every single thing that we have done since the eighties, when the PCs, you know, very, became very popular and continued on some each of us has the same tool but what we put into it is what we get out of it mm -hmm. and it, the same thing with ai i have been testing uh chat gbt since december the 22nd of 22 i think i didn't jump in in november when i was invited but i started in december and at first i was very negative mm -hmm. in doing it because quite frankly having spent my entire career online and I know how beta works, alpha and beta work. And it's like, I don't feel like being a guinea pig right now. Mm -hmm. And then I, and the very first thing I said to myself, okay, if it's got data in it, it's a big database somewhere. There are centers, there are uh, economic development opportunities because they got to store all that data. My mind goes all the way around because virtual communities come from real life community. And the whole issue is, and we get back to keyword being communication. So if we are communicating and I use this AI tool, how can I possibly be a better communicator? It's got pulling in all this old data. I want to live in the now. 
And so when I learned about where it got its information, and then we had to train it to do what we wanted to do, and I learned how to feed it my information, the information I wanted it to have. I also told it that there was incorrect information about me out there on the internet. That's a good session. If you ever want to put that in chat GPT and say, what does the world know about me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. will find it very surprising for the most part because all of us have given names, but they're common with other people around the world even. And so it pulls that in because it's data. It's simply data. Mm -hmm. It's meaningless if you can't do something worthwhile t with it. Yeah. So that's these prompts that we all learned. It's like, oh, you have to use prompt in our artificial intelligence. You've got to yeah. use a prompt. What is a prompt? It's a key word. And that's what I used to tell people. And when I did my public speaking, I said, I've got to learn to live my life in keywords. Think about it. It's a sound bite. And I get back to TJ, which tickles me when I'm listening to him at times because his strategic pauses are on keywords. And we remember those keywords. When we walk away from that public speaking engagement, it's like something resonated with us. It's that keyword that happened. So when you mm -hmm. get back to chat GPT, and I'm sorry because I'm a Christian woman, I'm going to admit that right up front, and I have the age group that I'm in, you know, we're all uh, going south and, you know, it's going to happen really fast and all of, the, all of that kind of stuff. And I say, hey, take care of your own business. And this is where you can actually take that. We have the, the, the Bible is in there. So regardless of what you may think, it's in there. And it goes way back in different cultures and all of that. But it's interpretation. You get in. You get out what you put in. And so it's how you... And people laughed at me when I said, listen to what the programmers are saying. It's a conversational tool conversational AI. So then mm -hmm. I first did it like I was playing with a computer. I was communicating with a computer, right? I used the key words, but I didn't make it conversational. And so then I started with, I got to tell you, I'm sitting here in front of my computer, so I'm having this, I'm telling this in text to it. And you can also use tools to actually uh, give your audio to the the chat GPT. You don't have to do it in, you know, using your hands, but you're talking to it. And so I talk to it like a human. And it actually, in the response, in picking that up, it picked up my personality mm -hmm. and began to converse with me. So you know that you're beginning to master chat GPT when it says, can you ask me, please? Because... Mm -hmm. I've given it a long prompt about what I want to done, and said, but you didn't say please. <laughs> then I haven't a, noticed that before. And so hey, I apologize, Barb. We're going to have to switch gears. I've got Ben back. We're going to have to switch to the Amazon Live okay. segment, but I want to right. invite everyone to stay on. But Susan, just putting a one last tip on the AI, how I personally use it is I ask questions to suggest topics to me. Again, I'm not gonna read some whole script that AI has written or I haven't yet, but I find it very helpful to stimulate ideas for topics. So I'll periodically say to chat, and I will dictate in, uh, give me interesting provocative documents, uh, topics that relate mm -hmm. to communication skills that would be great for long form YouTube videos that are not just the obvious, how do you get rid of us and ums and avoid being afraid of speaking? I might make it that long and it will spit out all sorts of topics. I mean, these are all AI generated here. Some of these I did earlier today. How to win friends and influence people in the digital age. My favorite just book. Just hearing that. <laughs> What's that? That's one of my favorite books. <laughs> Yeah, so I was able to reference the book, talk about modern tips. So it's stimulating. Just hearing that one topic, it was enough for me to talk about it for eight minutes this morning. Now, so what I'll typically do is ask for 25, 50 suggestions at once. 
I'll look through them and maybe a third of them, I think, okay, that's, that's a good topic and I'll use it. So to me, that's not letting AI do all the thinking for me. It's just helping speed up certain parts of the process so that my own thinking can be shared more easily and more effectively with people. We're going to have to uh, transition now to our Amazon Live. And my colleague, Ben, is going to facilitate that. And because what we do, we do it a little bit differently here. What we do is we did go on Amazon Live, but we also continue to stream on every other platform, Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and all the rest. Only on Amazon Live can people see the products in the carousel and buy it. So it's sort of a show within a show within a show. By that, I mean we have our, our regular live session here for everyone. We're also then now going to add to the stream, courtesy of StreamYard, which means courtesy of Barb who brought us to StreamYard. We're doing the Amazon Live where I talk about products and so it's sort of a show within a show. And at the end of that, I then actually produce short form video product reviews that people on Amazon will still see that in the live section. But those videos are then uploaded as separate videos into my storefront and they go on various product pages on Amazon. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to pull up my products for today. These are... These are books where you could do any kind of product you want for Amazon Live as long as the product is for sale on Amazon. So we're going to get, I'm going to move my <laughs> teleprompter away because I don't want to break the glass and drop it. So excuse me for one moment as I put that back safely on the shelf. And we're going to get ready to go here. Susan, please stay with us, but I'm going to take you off for right now. And I'm also going to get my tools ready because I am going to use the my cell phone. I'll just put everything here. I'll assemble it when we're ready. You know what? I'm seeing now that I'm a bit shiny. So before we do this, I'm going to do what I sometimes do, and I'm just going to put some mosaic powder on. I'm not trying to make myself look tan. I'm not trying to make myself look more beautiful. I just don't want to look shiny for videos for you here and certainly for produced videos where I'm trying to convince people I can help them look confident and comfortable. It does not as effective if I look like I'm sweating and nervous. So I just want to lightly do this. And those of you who are professional makeup artists, you may see all sorts of things I'm not doing exactly right. But that's what I'm doing. And I, I'm hoping you could see it's just less shiny. That's really all I'm after. Okay, Barb, or excuse me, Ben, let's hop right in. And Barb, thank you so much for all your time and expertise today. And I'm going to go ahead and for this part of it, Ben, I'm going to be on, I'm going to be on my Amazon live page, although I'm not going to be on the, the app. What did I do here? Okay. Something is happening. Okay. There we go. So Ben, you'll alert me if we do have any questions from the Amazon live community. Okay, Ben, if you can go ahead and give me the connect us to Amazon and we'll go ahead and go live. And thanks, Susan, so much. Feel free to stay with us if you like, but I understand if you have to get back to business. Okay, Ben, and you'll just, you'll give me a countdown as normal, correct? Hello and welcome. I'm TJ Walker. Thank you for joining me here on Amazon Live. I'm with the TJ Walker Success Channel where we try to help you become more successful in life by communicating more effectively and living out your life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. As a part of that, I do like to share products that personally benefit me at some aspect of my life. Today, I'm going to go through a number of books that I particularly like and enjoy. These are all books that I paid for with my own money that I've read, that I've underlined key passages and oftentimes reread. 
and that I recommend to friends and family and colleagues already. So I wanted to, excuse me, we have, somehow have a fly in here. So I want to share these with you right now. The first is a book called Be Your Future Self Now by Dr. Benjamin Hardy. Now he is an intriguing, intriguing character, someone who had a horrible, horrible childhood, barely got out of high school and then had a radical transformation and became one of the most prolific writers in the personal development scene in the world today. He, it seems like he's putting out a, a best-selling book about every three months. He also now has a wildly successful YouTube channel, but I have found his work much more practical and there's a unique spin. What, what Dr. Benjamin Hardy does so well is He's great at synthesizing so many other personal development experts' insights, but then the final 10% is his own unique perspective that is quite often more concrete and more actionable than things you've read in the past from others. So I've read, I think, all of his books now, you know, at least half a dozen, and he's someone who just sort of sprung up out of nowhere by writing on the medium platform and became one of the most successful bloggers and i think at one year was the most successful blogger in the world hundreds of millions of people reading his stuff he's been able to migrate that audience to his books and has, has become wildly successful so i would recommend you check out be your future self now i've had countless pages marked down that's how i know a book is good is i've turned down the pages and I underline sections that I find particularly insightful and relevant. And sometimes I read a book that everyone thinks is great. At the end of it, I don't have any page turned down. Not so with his. So a lot of good stuff there. Check it out. And again, it's available in the carousel below. Those of you joining us today on Amazon Live. The next book, Status and Culture. This is sort of like a modern Thornstein Veblen, really looking about how in every culture, people, all people are interested in status. It's a part of culture. And show me someone who says they don't care about status. And all you have to do is point to something else. So for example, I, I know people say, well, I don't care what car anyone drives. How could anyone be so superficial? But then they're very status conscious about their university degree and where they went to school or what instrument their child plays. So there's all sorts of highbrow, lowbrow status. And this author, David Marks, did a fantastic job. It's about how our desire for social rank creates taste, identity, art, fashion, and constant change. So it's not a, the sort of book I read that often, to be brutally honest, but I found it fascinating look at contemporary culture, giving me better insight into how friends, family, and myself, how we all interact with modern culture. So check that out. Again, it's available in the carousel below for sale right now with one click. Now, this is a blast from the past. I don't even have the cover anymore. It's called Looking Out for Number One. And this is from the 1970s. If you are as interested in personal development as I am, and you have an interest in sort of the history of personal development, this is a fascinating book. It's written by an author, Robert Ringer, who had several wildly successful books in the 70s. Now, he still occasionally puts a book out. He is much more let's say libertarian, individualistic, Ayn Randish than 95, 99% of people in the personal development space. It's not that I endorse every single principle here, but if you are all interested in the history of personal development, especially from the you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, earlier decades, you need to at least be familiar with his work. So we have that linked in the carousel below. He has a number of, of very provocative books. I just stumbled across some of them back in the 70s when I was first learning about these things. And this is one I, I got a, a used version of it along 
in the last couple of years. So, oh, his other main claim to fame was winning through intimidation. Again, a, a title designed to be wildly provocative, controversial. And that was his first book that I read. Interestingly, he self-published his, his first couple of books and was a real trailblazer in the art of self-publishing books. So if you're interested in it just from that standpoint, to see how he did it, I recommend you check it out. And we're, we're looking to see if there's any comments on Amazon Live. Feel free to, to post those. And I also see people joining us on other channels. You can post your comments as well. This next book is Making Habits, Breaking Habits by Jeremy Dean. Now, those of you who know me know that sort of my beyond communication, habit, habit formation is the number one concern I have in life. It's my, my number one area of focus, writing, creating courses. I have apps on habits. So I try to read every single book out there, certainly every book published by a major publisher on habits in the last 40 years or so. This one makes my cut. Why we do things, why we don't, and how to make change stick. I do really like his concepts on how to make certain change. You've got a new habit. How do you really make sure it sticks? So again, numerous pages turned down, lots of underlying. That's how I know this worked for me and resonated with me. I'm just going to arbitrarily turn to one page. Perhaps watching TV has more to do with habit and passing the time than anything you actually get from it. Admittedly, passing the time is a kind of use, but not a very good one. On the one hand, you could say that's astoundingly obvious. On the other hand, if it gets you to think about why am I turning this TV on now? Why, why not read a book? If it can just trigger that, it is extremely helpful. So check out the book, Making Habits, Breaking Habits. It is available for sale right now in the carousel. The final book I wanted to call yourself attention to during our live segment today, The Willpower Instinct, How Self-Control Works, Why It Matters, and What You Can Do to Get More of It. And this is by Kelly McConnell, who is a widely respected professor and instructor at Stanford University. So you see here quoted all over the place. She's held in very high esteem by the personal development, the, the professional psychology world. And I, I would recommend this book. There is a school of thought that says, oh, willpower is overrated and nobody really has willpower. It's just about your habits. There is more to it than that. It goes much deeper than that. Again, I found the book highly insightful in my own studies about every aspect of habit, habit formation, building good habits. I've felt it important that I really study all the experts on willpower and self-discipline. And this is an important foundational work in that arena. So these are the books that I do wanted to call to your attention. And please know I'm not the author of these books and I'm not the publisher. I'm simply someone who has read the books, enjoyed them, paid for them, recommended them to others, and I'm now sharing them with you. So if you have any questions or comments on that, feel free to ask me. You can use our live chat function on Amazon right now. We also have people joining us on other platforms as well. And, and other, other comments are coming in. Susan has written saying, I think this, not that by Dr. Josh Axe is a book that I may want to review. I've heard of that title, but I don't know that I've read it before. I don't think I have. So Susan, very much appreciate the recommendation for that particular book. So now what I'm going to do and begging some, oh, it's a brand new release, Susan says. So we'll, we'll check that out. Now what I'm going to do for our friends on Amazon is give you just a, a very brief refresher of what we talked about because I am an Amazon influencer, which is why you're seeing me here right now. I'm not a brand ambassador for any of those book publishing companies. I am one of 
Amazon's influencers, and they are nice enough to allow me on this platform to stream live to you right now. What I'm going to do right now is to actually do quick summary videos of these very same products. And I'm going to use my cell phone. These videos will be of the very same products. And these videos will go right on my storefront. You're, if you're watching this on Amazon Live, you're probably already on my storefront. So what I'm going to do is to plug in the receiver for my phone, in my phone, and I'm using a little microphone. It boosts the quality of the audio. So I'm turning on the microphone. Well, I'm attempting. There we go. I'll, I look for the green light. By the way, I don't have it in the carousel right now, but if you're interested at all in a microphone that's compatible with the iPhone, this is the microphone I use. You can see it, and I believe I have it categorized in the technology section of my Amazon storefront. Okay, so we are going to go ahead, and I'm going to pull up the video portion of my camera. I'm going to hit video. I'm going to hit it reverse so I can now see what I'm pointing at. So I'm just going to do these quick summary. These are typically going to be a short, brief, typically 15-second product review videos. So I'm going to go ahead and put the microphone right on my tie because I do want you to be able to hear me easily and not have echo and distortion. And I see that you know, Susan's joining us. Susan, I would highly recommend to you, since you read books like Think This, Not That, and, and as a consultant, people are always asking you for advice, presumably on books, online courses, things like that. You may want to be in the Amazon Influencer Program to primarily help your clients and your customers and people who deal with you. But it's yet another way to demonstrate your expertise, get in front of more people, and make some money too. That never really hurts. Okay, so I'm going to do, these are going to be relatively quick. I'm going to turn off this one light because even though I think it looks okay for you on Amazon Live right now, it's a little too dominant for the backdrop with my cell phone camera. So I'm going to change that right now. Again, any of the books you see me talk about, they're available right now in the carousel with one click. So you don't have to go search for it, Google search, pull out credit card and all that. You're already on Amazon and you can get these with one click. Okay. So again, these are the same products I just did. It's a, it'll be a little bit repetitive for you, but I just want to give people kind of a 15 second version of the good things I talked about already. Be Your Future Self Now by Dr. Benjamin Hardy. This is one of the most exciting young writers in the world in the field of personal development. Every time I read his works, I feel like I come away with something new. So that was 14 seconds long. That's typically what I'm trying to do with these Amazon influencer videos that could, you know, you're getting to see it right now on Amazon Live, but these are also product reviews that will be on my product page and can also, or on my storefront page, and they can also be on the actual product page of the product itself. Status and Culture by David Marks. Whether we want to admit it or not, we all care about status. Every culture has certain markers, and that affects everything people do. Read this book to learn more about yourself. And I wanted to say about yourself, friends, neighbors, your society, but I ran out of time. I wanted to finish that in 15 seconds. Looking out for number one. This is one of the classics of the early personal development movement. Robert Ringer is in his own field. It is 
you know what? I'm going to delete that one. I didn't like that. That's not exactly what I meant. Typically, I do all of these in one take, but, you know, not always. We are live here on Amazon. You're seeing it. But if I'm going to do something that will possibly be posted for years, I'll just redo it. And I just, I'm pretty sure his name is Robert Ringer. I just want to make sure I didn't botch that. Yeah, Robert Ringer. <clears throat> Looking Out for Number One by Robert Ringer. This is the same author who wrote Winning Through Intimidation, which kind of defined a certain segment of the personal development world of the 1970s. A fascinating read if you want to know the history. Okay, next book. Making Habits, Breaking Habits by Jeremy Dean. This book goes into tremendous detail with great insight on how you can not only make a change in habits, but keep that good habit. The Willpower Instinct by Dr. Kelly McConnell. She is a fascinating, widely respected psychologist, professor, and teacher at Stanford University. If you want to really understand willpower, check out this book. Okay, so that is the conclusion of our time today with all of our good friends here on Amazon Live. I'm TJ Walker. Thanks so much. Please Take a look at the carousel below if you are interested in any of these books right now. And thanks so much. Please join me on a regular basis. I try to come here almost every day. It's having a lot of fun. I like to come to Amazon every day because I'm typically buying a new book myself or some product, and it's great to spend time with you. Thanks so much. Okay, so we're now off of Amazon Live, but I'm still here with you. So I wanted to thank you for uh, spending time with me today. What I typically do is then show people step by step, how do you go from just talking to a camera, how do you get it to the point where it can be seen by someone or make a little money? So first thing I'll do is I'll take my receiver out. I'm going to take my... Ooh, I'm seeing a red flash. I, I hope I got audio on that. I'm going to, I'm turning the microphone off. I don't quite know how the battery. So first thing I can do is test that. There's a chance that those didn't work. She is oh, it did work. Okay. So my audio was recorded. So I'm just going to walk you through this relatively quickly because I've got to go to the dentist. I had broke a cap a week and a half ago. And my dentist thankfully alerted me to the fact that my my new cap was it's a back molar. It was available, came in yesterday. So I'm going to dash to the dentist to have a cap put in. So I've got to be very aware of the time. Okay, so the first step is I go to my Amazon storefront. I hit create content. I then hit post video. I hit photo library, and then I'm just going to post. I'm going to tap the video I just shot. I hit done. And it is now uploading the video. I'm going to pull this next to me so I can reference it, the books. So right now it's uploading the video into the Amazon servers. It is processing the video. In a minute, it will allow me to label it and tag it. And Susan says, save them all in my personal development list in Amazon. So I'm, I'm glad. I hope you get some value out of that. And I appreciate that. So I'm going to hit browse history. Now I'm going to dictate the willpower instinct by Kelly. And I see there's the book. I add the product, I hit done. You can build your willpower, exclamation point. And I submit. And that's it. 
Now, I'm doing this relatively quickly because I've now been doing it every day for three months. And it's not that hard, but there are a number of steps. And when you just go and watch other YouTubers talk about it, it's typically at the conceptual level and they're showing you the finished product. I'm actually showing you step by step the entire process. And Susan says, does StreamYard connect to Amazon Live? Yes, it will allow you because we were doing everything there through StreamYard. I wasn't doing the Amazon Live part on my phone. I was doing it through StreamYard. So you get the, I think it's the RTMP, the key, and then you connect that to StreamYard and it allows you to do it. Okay. Post photo library. I'm posting the book. I'm hitting done. And that is the making habits, breaking habits one that's uploading. We'll try to do this as quickly as possible. We, we try to typically finish at noon each day. Thursday is a little more hectic day because we're going in and out of live shows on this channel, but also a private session for my Udemy students on the Facebook page. Okay. I hit your orders. Making habits, breaking habits by Jeremy. Sometimes it says it's not there, even though I know I bought it on Amazon. You don't have to buy these products on Amazon. You just have to have the product and it has to be available for sale on Amazon. Let me go to browse history now. Making habits, breaking habits by Jeremy. So I see the book. I add it. I hit done. Learn how to make your good habits permanent, exclamation point. I try to check it because sometimes when I'm dictating, it'll add a comma and Amazon does not let you use apostrophes. So you've got to make sure that doesn't happen or just won't accept it. I go to storefront. That one's finished. I hit create content. I hit post photo library. I go to the next book. This is the one. Now this one, I didn't check to see in the carousel. I think I bought this used. Oh, I know it's used. I can't remember if I bought it on Amazon or not. I'm assuming it is available, but we'll find out in just a minute. Every once in a while, do I do a product review and then I find it's not for sale on Amazon? Yeah, I do. But I've only invested 15 seconds making the video. If you are someone who scripts it out and editing and shooting and B-roll and all that special effects, obviously you want to check first before you invest all that time that the product is actually for sale on Amazon. So again, that one is looking out for number one. Okay. Looking out for number one by Robert. There it is. And they've got different versions of it because it is quite old. An important book in the history of personal development. So this, there's a lot more controversy to that author. And I didn't want to go into that. Amazon doesn't want you criticizing the products. I didn't want to seem to be too effusive. Uh, so you may have detected a little less enthusiasm for the book. I think it's really interesting just for people who really want to see the history of personal development. I don't know how applicable it is now. You may find it that way. He's of a, a, a more extreme, yes, you'd call it libertarian, Ayn Randian, mm -hmm. philosophical bent than I am. But you might enjoy it. Post, photo library, next book, status and culture, uploading, processing. We're coming up towards the end of our time together today. And it's been a lot of fun. Thursdays are always especially fun. So much interaction with students and, and everyone else. So this book is processing still. It's uploading. Fairly quick, browse history, 
and dictate status and culture by David Marks. That one did not dictate for some reason. Status and culture by David. Okay, there's the book. I add it. I hit done. Learn how status and culture affects everything and everyone. So I also look to make sure it's not too long. Amazon allows you 60 characters, and I did precisely 60 characters, but I didn't know that in advance. It was just so, sort of a lucky guess. Okay, create content, post, photo library, last book, Be Your Future Self, done. It is upload, and I see Susan wrote, people want to know also how you feel from your political view. So yes and no, people like it when you have the same political views they do. And quite often they don't like it if you have differing opinions. And every industry is a little bit different. You've got to be careful and make sure it's a very conscious thing you want because we do live in political times now where you can have what would, be a, would have been considered an extremely mainstream, moderate position only a few years ago and get death threats. So that's why on this channel, I do not talk about my own political beliefs. I certainly have them. I, I typically don't talk about any contemporary politician in office because I've found in certainly the last eight years that any criticism of a certain politician results in massive death threats. And I just don't have the time for it. So we, if we're talking about politicians, it's strictly through the lens of communication skills. I'm typically looking at them only if they were in office or in power a long time ago, or at least a few decades ago. Are there, do I occasionally break that rule? Sure. But my goal here is not to somehow proselytize for any political views. And I'm not interested, frankly, in anyone else's political views on this show. There's plenty of shows for politics. This one is about communication skills that everyone needs in their personal life, their professional life, whatever they're doing. Do politicians need communication skills? Sure. Are they a good lens for talking about communication skills? Sometimes, sure. But I have found as recently as a few months ago, simply analyzing the strengths of the Canadian prime minister giving a speech, which by anyone, any fair-minded person, he did a fantastic job. But simply because I talked about a politician, I would the, the channel, the comments were inundated by people who just wanted to talk about the politics and how much they hate this person, how he's the worst person, and all this nonsense that is distracting from what we're really about here. There's plenty of other channels for that. So Susan, don't mind you asking, but that's that's why I don't really talk about politics here. Okay, the last book we're going to, and that is the uh, the Benjamin Hardy book, I believe. Be Your Future Self Now by Benjamin. There's the book. 1,400 views, four and a half star. He has a true solid fan base. You can create your own future now, exclamation point. and submit. Now, I may have missed a few comments coming in here. If so, apologies. Okay. And Susan writes a number of things privately, so I never know. Sometimes I've been chastising, chastised for sharing things that were in the private chat because people didn't really want it. But Susan says, thanks so much and enjoyed it. Thank you. I mean, how I can advocate for your lives. I want to help you because become more seen. And well, thanks very, very much. And Susan's good at graphics and WordPress. So Susan, thank you so much for offering to help me. And I, I assume other members of this community too. So I really appreciate your thoughts, your generosity. We're in all of this to help each other. So the sheer fact that you were here 
is great. And speaking of graphics, well, you did mention it, but I hold up this cup every single day, not because I really love this. I don't even know where this cup came from. But I do think as I try to drink green tea throughout the day because it's healthy and I want my my vocal cords well lubricated. But I really don't have any particular affiliation with this saying or this quote or anything. I'd much rather have something that says the T.J. Walker show or the T.J. Walker success show and maybe a quote like, you know, communicate your way to success, something like that. And with a family member, I did experiment with a few graphics and I didn't like anything. I'm not, I'm horrible at graphics. First of all, I'm colorblind. Second, everything, nothing clashes for me. Second of all, I just have no sense of what graphically looks good. I do sometimes have a sense of what doesn't work. My biggest pet peeve of all is People use dark lettering on a dark background or light lettering on a light background. You can't see it. That I'm good at detecting. So if you want to take a stab at something I could put on a coffee mug, because I would like to, if nothing else, I'm going to buy one and I can be promoting myself and I can look a little more professional like the Tonight Show or any other top talk show and a lot of top YouTubers. And it could be available for sale for people who do want it on my Amazon store, my merch store, Shopify store, Amazon, excuse me, not just Amazon, but YouTube makes it really easy to sell merchandise these days. And you don't have to store them. You don't have to ship them. It's just all done in their black magic warehouses, I guess. So I know I would buy one because <laughs> I need to use a cup every day. And I'm frankly kind of tired of this. So if you have any thoughts on graphics, I would very much appreciate that. I want to thank everyone today for spending time with me. Really appreciate it. And please, if you like this, if you got any value out of this today, please hit the thumbs up on whatever platform you're on. Please subscribe, sign up for notifications, share this channel with others. And please, please, please watch and comment on my produced videos that come out every day. We're going to have a couple more videos today come out on the channel you're watching. Every day I post two new short form videos every day, seven days a week, and a long form video every single day. So please do that. Hey, I got to run because I got to get to the dentist in nine minutes. <laughs> so I'll see you soon. Thanks. And I'll see you here tomorrow live. Thanks.